Welcome back, you. Welcome back, you, to another week of study. I hope you're having a beautiful week um, so far. All right. Remember, we're on Unit 2 now, and we're talking about lies that appear to be truths. Okay? Lies that appear to be truths. Uh, we're in at our study lesson number 10 today. So, if you have your books, let's go. Um, but before we get into the study, let's ask God to help us, okay, to understand the lesson. So our teaching and learning won't be in vain. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time that you always set aside so we can break bread together, God. I pray, Lord God, that you would enlighten us through your Holy Spirit, God. Give us wisdom, Lord God, of what we're learning, Lord God. Help us receive, God, what it is for you to have for us today, God. God, help the youth today to see you, God, for who you really are, the truth. Lord, and you are the way, you are the life. No man come to the Father except through you, Jesus, because you are true. And your truth makes us free if we know your truth. So, God, I pray that the youth will just find it in their heart, Lord God, to start believing in you, walking in your, your way, walking in obedience, God, so you can bless their life, so they can see their full potential and purpose that you have for them, God, because your plans are wonderful and they are perfect, God. So I thank you for enlightening us through this lesson today, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you, that is true, that, 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 that's true, that I have a purpose for us. I mean, I had a purpose for you, for everybody. You know, we can be off course, but sometimes, but we can get back in the, in, in the race, okay? Sometimes we're on the sideline looking on, and because we got excuses, oh, I got caught a crown, my leg hurting, or this and that, but we always can get back in the race. Remember, we're never too late to get back into the race, okay? Because there's always a finish line. So let's get back in the race. All right. Now, the title of the day is Absolute or Relative, okay? Absolute, that means undeniable. It is what it is. It's solid. That's the foundation. It's locked in. Can't be changed. It's absolute. There's no room for anything else. It's to the fullness, okay? It's absolute. So we're talking about absolute truth, okay, today, or relative, where it seems like it's seasonal it changes in the moment, okay? Uh, we don't do this like we over here to you tell us, oh, y'all done that back in y'all days, but now we don't do it no more like that, um, uncle. We don't do it no more like that, dad. We don't do it no more like that, um, big bro or little big big sister. You know, this is, this is, this is the new era. This is how we do it now. This so we're going to get into what is um, absolute truth and, and and what is just relative truth, okay? And, and what is relative? And, and and there are some such things as gray area, you know, but things are black or white, left or right, up or down, you know. So, but we're going to get into the lesson so we can explain it more deeply, okay? Uh, we're going to start reading in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, and then we're going to go to uh, the book of John, okay? And we're going to jump around there also. So Isaiah um, chapter 5 verse 20 said, Woe to those, listen, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now we're going to go to Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than than light because their deeds are evil. Now we're going to go to um, verse 20. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Some um, translations say manifest, okay? Verse 21 And he who does the truth comes to the light, and his deeds may be clearly seen that they have done, they have been done in God. Now we're going to go to John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now we're going to go to John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now we can go to John 16, verse 13. However, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you all things to come. 17, John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. What is truth? Your word is truth. Amen. The Bible. 
the word of God that been written for us, for our learning, for our edification, okay, and to uh, salvation, all right? So the word of God is truth. That's why we can base it on. If people are going to try and deny it. They're going to try to uh, step on it. They're going to try to cut it. They're going to try to weaken it down. They're going to try to look at their own view of it. And But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if it's just the spirit of truth, which will lead you to all spiritual truth, okay? So this is not this book is wasn't written um, by man wisdom. It was written by a man hand, but it wasn't written by man wisdom. Okay, so we know that the holy scripture was written by men, the holy men of God, as as, as the Spirit had given them um, utterance. You know, to, to to write these things. He gave them. You know, man. So that's what I'm saying. It's not a man wisdom. It ain't like man just thought right in. And you you be seeing what. All these uh, uh, scholars, um, really intelligent people um, that write and and man it is and they're trying to pull some of this the, some things from the Bible and still twist it and put it in their own way and it doesn't work. Is it either absolute or it's relative? Okay, now we're dealing with absolute today. We're talking about the Word of God, absolute truth, nothing else. It's not watered down. And matter of fact. I know a lot of people get 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 upset with um, the Christians. They get upset with with Bible truth, Bible preaching um, pastors and preachers, and they get upset with true Bible believing preaching leaders, and they get upset and offended by true Bible believing Christian just just brothers and sisters in Christ, just a witness for God, a servant of God, just spreading His word. It's like like it's our word. It's <laughs> It, it, we had to conform the same way to this word. We had to conform to to God's way. It ain't like this is not ours. We just it's already been wrote. We don't. Have, the Bible said in, Re, in Revelation that you know the curse is the man that that add to it or takes away from it. So it's already been it been been locked in. It's already uh, concreted. Okay, in truth, it's already been concreted. It's absolute. So we just spread in the word. We just just preaching what's already been written. We declare what's already been declared by Jesus Christ and all the holy prophets and the apostles and all those that came before us that <laughs> that believed in God and believed in, and believed in Christ that was led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's all we're doing. We just—it's not ours. It's not our word. It's God's word, and it's never going to change. People trying to change it, but <laughs> woe to who call good evil and evil good. And who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe into that person. Okay. Might not see it right now. You know, God have mercy on you. God have mercy on us. Believe me. But I'm telling you. This is the condemnation. This is the condemnation. What is the condemnation? Uh, did Jesus come to condemn? No. He didn't come to condemn. He came to set the captives free. He came to... <laughs> He came to give us salvation. You know, he would give us repentance if we repent and turn from our sin. But he said that people love darkness rather than light. And he gave the reason why. Why? Because their deeds are evil. Okay? Their, their deeds are evil. So they're going to try to twist the word and make it fit their lifestyle. And, 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 and the word of God ain't going to be twisted to fit your lifestyle. You better change your lifestyle to fit the word. That's just, that's, that's absolute. That's not relative. That's just absolute. So, and, and but our main idea today is not having absolute truth is like being on a um, drifting ship dragged in by the currents of the world, just being tossed and here and there. Wherever the wave go, that's where we go. Wherever the wave go, that's where the ship goes. It, it doesn't have no rudder. It doesn't have no anchor. It, it doesn't. It's not anchored in nothing. It's just going tossed to and fro. Don't know what, one way of the no, uh, of the next. You know, we don't know what the next day holds for for a ship that's drifting because it has no anchor. It's not anchored. It's not anchored in. It's not better than the ground in the bed of the ocean. It's not better. It's, it's not hooked to nothing, so it won't drift away. And that's what it is. That's why people who don't have absolute truth, it's just like they ship. Every day, they looking at, they trying to make somebody their, their idol, their, their role model, and they chasing after them and looking up to them like, like not like what they're saying is true. They need to be... They, they need Christ too, believe me. They need Christ. And so, you're going to follow somebody. You better follow Christ. And that's the best advice I can give you, believe me. 
I know been on both sides. Thank God he allowed me to live through my my stubbornness, my my, my, my foolishness and, and I just don't even want to think about it and talk about it. But I told God, since you delivered me from all that with your grace, I'm gonna help the youth. I don't I'm gonna cry out, I'm gonna warn them that whether they take heed or not, I'm gonna continue to tell them danger 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 whenever you see satan try to do something again in your life that move you away from god or, or, or convince you trying to deceive you like you did eve to try to make the, the truth look like i mean make it look like make a lie look like a truth a little bit man stranger danger that's what you should tell it. stranger danger stranger danger and you're gonna be in danger so i'm, I'm gonna continue to cry with you for you whether you take heed or not I'm, I'm gonna do my job what I told God I would promise to do. Okay, so I'm telling you, I don't been on both sides. You man, there are some lies that appear to be true, but they are not. That they're relative. They're not absolute. Absolute only come from the Word of God. They cannot be changed. The Western society is going through what the most dangerous change in the history. What was previously a behavioral deviation is now a different expression of the way of life. Other words, that's, that's not my way. Live like you want to live. Express yourself. How do you express yourself? This is just the way I express myself. I'm sorry. I don't, I, I, I is she really? I mean, <laughs> this is how I, this is who I am. I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get caught up in all the details, but because sin is sin. And I know that every person that does darkness, believe me, I know it. You might have your, your conscience sheared. You might be under the influence of something else. But I'm telling you, when God, every everybody that was born, okay, got to have a conscience. So you can't tell me that the things that we're doing that's that's wrong that we that we don't know it's wrong. But woe unto that person who's saying good is evil and evil is good. Huh? Woe unto that person saying dark is light and light is darkness. Woe unto that person that's saying bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. The Bible said, whoa, man, danger to that person. Look out, it's, something is coming. And I'm telling you, youth is, is, is that's, just, that's, that's just the basic, man. I mean, that's the fundamentals. When John was, was, was crying off of repentance, he was, he was saying, repent, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When people was coming to him and he saw the Pharisees and all the scribes and all the other people coming, he had bring something worthy of repentance. Other, don't come with no excuse. Don't, man, just call your wrong, wrong. You know, man, when I was coming up, you know, people that did it wrong know it was wrong. You, you ask me, say, man, what you're doing is wrong. I say, I know, man, ain't got caught yet. But, I mean, you, you, you don't try to change the word of God to fit your lifestyle. <clears throat> Man, so what I'm trying to say is, you, you listen. There's a, there, there's a, how you call it? There's a, there, there's something going around now that just <clears throat> express yourself. No matter what it is, <clears throat> yeah, excuse me, I got a dry socket. Just express yourself. You know, whether it's right or wrong. When I was coming up, right is right, <clears throat> wrong, it was wrong. So what I'm trying to say, you is don't try to make right wrong don't try to make wrong right man just stick with the absolute truth the word of god don't twist it only god knows if you know you're wrong repent jesus said i, I didn't come to <clears throat> i'm sorry jesus said, i didn't come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance those that are sick need a physician not the ones that are well. What he was saying, he's saying, if you already think you're well, then my coming is not going to benefit you because you already think you're righteous. You already think you're well. You don't think you're sick. You don't think you need a savior. That's what he's saying. I can't. Jesus is saying, I can't do nothing for you if you if you think this way. And that's what the generation is now. Just just the way I express myself. This just who I am. I mean, I ain't changed. I, I've been like this all my life. Why well, am I changed now? Man, whoa, 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 whoa to that person. They call wrong right and right wrong. Okay, so you, I'm telling you, you can do it. I know, I know you can. And th listen to this conclusion. This is a beautiful conclusion. You know, it's a not everything is black and white. Okay, there are some grays, but even so, gray, black, and white still exist. 
Okay? Jesus told not only that the truth exists, but that he himself is the way, the only truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. He also told that lies also exist. And guess what? And he pointed to Satan as the father of lies. Okay? So do we believe that there is an absolute truth revealed by God? Or we continue to um, believe the lie that is everything is relative. Now I'm going to share this. So you, the break it down real simple. Okay? Man, I love you. God love you. It's either you on God's side or you on the world's side. Okay, you being used by God or you you being used by Satan. That I mean that's that's it. You know, the Bible speaks of us as an instrument. So whoever's playing us, that's what sound we they're gonna get out of us. Okay? So youth, but I know, I know, I know deep down that you want to follow God all your heart. I just I, I know it and I know it's a lot of temptation out in this world. And I and but um, believe me, the same tempter that was in the garden that, that brought sin into by, by disobedience by Eve and, and Adam, okay, both of them, man, that the that, 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 that tempter made it sound, he deceived them because he made the lie sound like it was truth. I mean, he twisted, I mean, it was it was right there, man. Did, did God say that, that you, you know, you, you would die? You won't surely die. You know, he didn't say you won't die. He said you won't surely die. And then he gave the reason that why God told you not to eat from this um, tree, okay? He said you make one wise, you know, and all these things, and man, and that deception, that little bit right there, man, it was, it was enough. It was enough to know that they were naked, and the presence, and they ran from the presence of God. Adam even hid himself. It got so bad from the presence of God. So are we hiding ourselves because of we were disobedient? God said, I want to clothe you again. He can clothe you with absolute truth. No, nothing relative, you know, but just absolute truth. It's not our word. This is not the pastor's word. It's not the leader's word. We're just proclaiming the word that's already been written, preached, and believed on. Thousands of years ago, we're still preaching today. And I know you use, I know you want, I know you want it, I know you're hungry for it. God is there. The only one. The way the truth, and the life. God bless you, youth. Hope you make the right decision, because God loves you.